Welcome, this is Mr. Fisher flipping third grade mathematics. We're going to do a lesson today about the force times tables. Uh, I found this quote by Garfield. He says, the most active thing about me is my imagination. I hope that I can find that same thing within my third graders because you do have quite the great imagination. Today's agenda, this is lesson 12 and our lesson today is about the fours. For the plan for this week, I, I really want to make sure that the students understand that this homework is actually two days in the making. So you have Monday and Tuesday night to be able to do this night's homework. And on Wednesday, you have a new lesson, which would be lesson 14, because it's a review for the week. You'll be able to view that lesson on Wednesday and Thursday and be able to come back on Friday and talk about it. So as you can see, we are getting into the process and the rest of the day we're going to go through the an introduction on the fours we're going to model hopefully give you some ideas on how fours can interrelate with fives and then we'll do a couple problems together before I let you do the problems on your own and at the end I'll show you a couple apps hopefully fours fours times tables really does take a little bit more practice than the twos and fives and tens. They're like nines. You, you really have to go through them to make sure you have them. Here's a couple of ways that I've done it with the students. Um, first of all, skip counting. By count bys, you really should be going through those daily, not skip counting. Then with a partner or with a parent, guardian, you go back through and you do your mix up times tables. So you don't get them all the same time. You don't memorize the order. 9 times 4, 36. 8 times 4, 32. Well, we're finding that it's very beneficial to also learn the division at the same time. So when you see the big number, 12, divided by the small number, 4, we know the answer is 3. Practice it's going to take a little bit. You're going to see that the benefit of being able to know 10 times 4 equals 40 and then turn around and know that 40 divided by 4 equals 10. Try that again. 4 times 4 is 16. I really would encourage you to find, um, if you can, a way for you to practice either with skip counting, multiplying, um, or some other way. And that one's uh, by Schoolhouse Rock. Let's go back to uh, the rest of our lesson, Multiply and Divide. Let's model. Before we go through the process, I want to remind you that here is the process. You should have your notebook ready to write down 5 to 15 problems. Watch the video with me. Pause the video to write down your answers in your notebook. Bring it back on Wednesdays and Fridays to be ready to discuss your answers with your group on Wednesday and Friday for the next video that will be available. Our objective today is to multiply and divide with four and look for patterns in multiplications, count bys, and solving problems. So think four. There's a review problem. How many possible products can you get using any combination of two of these factors? I want you to remember that products and factors are some of the vocabulary that we have been using lately. Product is the answer and factors are the two multipliers that we're going to be using. Here's a hint. We're going to have this be our warm up. Two times, two times five. Correct. Put five right there. And what does two times five equal? 10. Now, if you notice, I did this on purpose, but you have 2 dot 5 equals 10, 2 asterisk 5 equals 10, and 2 x 5 equals 10. And what do these three symbols all represent? That's correct. They're all multiplication. But I wanted you guys to see that this right here is a factor, and 5 is a factor, but this is the product. So 10 is a product. It's the answer when you get to multiplication. One way that I've been able to teach the students and it's been very effective is to see multiples of 2. I push enter and it will show me all the multiples of 2. So I can actually find 2 times 5 by counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2 times 5 is 10. Here's our first problem. I want you to write this one on your notebook. Pause it. Jake ran around a two mile track three times. Luke ran around the two mile track five times. The boys said together they ran 16 miles. Are the boys right? Explain. In class, we will go ahead and erase this to see if you have the right answer. Next, 
we want to see one, let's do a four times, let's make it four times five, and we see that it equals 20. We check our answer, we get it correct. But what if I, four times three, and I, I really thought that that was 11. We check our answer, try again. And if you notice, it's up here, four, we go down, one, zero, one, two, three. And on that third line down, it is 12. So I'm going to change that to 12. And check my answer. So there's something you can do, be thinking about. Here's the next question I'd like you guys to do. How many legs are on six horses? So you can use this to help you figure out this answer. So this is question number two. You find the total by starting with the fifth count by and then counting up from there. So question number two. See if you can figure out this answer. And draw a picture. I'd like to see six horses' legs on your picture because drawing is very critical in being able to solve math. Problem number three. How many sides are eight quadrilaterals? First of all, we need to figure out what a quadrilateral is. Quadrilateral is a shape with four sides. And usually those slides, we find the total by starting with the fifth count by and counting up from there. So what they're trying to do is show you that there is a easy way to remember how to count by fours. If you already know five times four, you know five times four equals 20. We've got one, two, three, four, five shapes. So we can start with 20 and then we can count up from there. So five times four is tw equals 20. So we can go 20 and then I'm going to use my fingers 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So I could count by my fingers or I can count by fours. 20 plus four is 24 plus four more is 28. Okay, so problem number three. Give yourself a second, pause it. Now let's check the answer. On this problem, I wanted you guys to see how the answer looks. So problem number three should be correct when you get to class. Our answer says 20, 24, 28, 32. So the total of the eight quadrilaterals is 32. Another way you could have written that would be eight times four equals 32. There's the multiplication problem. We did it by count bys. Okay, last but not least, we gotta check it to see if Puzzled Penguin is correct. So this is question number four. Today I had to find eight times four. I didn't know the answer, but I figured it out by combining two multiplications. I did know. I knew five times two equals 10. That's correct. Three times two equals six. And then he added them. 10 plus six equals 16. And he figured that was 8 times 4. Is he correct? If he's correct, say yes. If he's not correct, say no. And tell us why he's incorrect. Poor puzzled penguin. Let's go ahead and look the answer because I want you to see the wording of this answer. So it should look the similar on your paper. So if you haven't pushed pause, you better push pause so you can uh, write down the answer. And then push play. Okay, the answer. He did not do it correct. It should have been 5 times 4 equals 20 and 3 times 4 equals 12. 20 plus 12 equals 32. Well, in class, you're going to come and we're going to go back through the math board and we're going to look at some of the patterns that you might see. But I'm also going to make sure you understand how to multiply using your fingers. So 3 times 4, if you hold up your thumb and your two fingers, you can count by fours. 4, 8, 12. And we know that 3 times 4 is 12. Now we've been used to using um, our fingers to count by fives, but we're going to be switching that so you can count by other numbers also. And it's just putting your brain in the frame of mind to count in that sequence. So here's the multiplication by fours, and you can actually do this with your fingers. And I would, I would suggest you pause the video and you practice it. 1 times 4 is 4. Then your second finger, 8, third finger, 12, fourth finger, 16, fifth finger, 20. And so you can actually have two hands up, count all the way to 40 by fours. There's a look at the lesson that we will do in class. Let's go to homework next, your sheet. We're on question number five. Well, before we get to question number five, this is supposed to be going home on Wednesday. 
This is a check sheet for threes and fours. Remember if you fold it along the line you can actually fold it into four parts and then you can give it to somebody else and they can test you to see if you have your threes multiplying, threes dividing, fours multiplying or fours dividing and they can actually inner switch that but it's a chance for you to practice that. There we go. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Pause it there for a second. The homework sheet that I'll be making will include those nine problems. So we were on four, so five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. To do this one, find the area of the large rectangle by finding the areas of the two small rectangles and adding them together. There's the problem. Pause it, and then I'm gonna explain how you can do this. We want to do three and four, and we want to figure out what that is and I would suggest you color in those squares so you know that this that total equals 20 then you add 3 times 4 to that so you have 20 plus 20. And this is one strategy you can use to put them all together